remember the pot of SEC fervor as we're in Fort Worth for ESPN College Football, presented by Cars.com, part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. And we welcome you as well to Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation, Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. 11th ranked Oklahoma Sooners, their title hopes on the line here against TCU. The Big 12, Oklahoma has to win here. If they do, they get a share of the conference title. But in an ironic twist, that would leave them rooting for the rivals, Texas. The Sooners win, Texas upsets K-State tonight. Then Oklahoma wins the Big 12 outright, lands that coveted automatic BCS bowl berth. Oklahoma won the toss. They defer. TCU will receive. Patrick O'Hara kicking off. Josh Boyce. Brandon Carter back deep for the Horn Frogs. And this will be Brandon Carter. Carter struggles to make it out, barely gets to the 13-yard line. Glad you're with us here, Joe Tessitore and Matt Millen. TCU offensively, what's the challenge for them against the Sooners? Well, Javon Boykin's their quarterback, and he's really a runner. They have to find balance, Joe. If they can find balance in the passing game and some consistency with Javon Boykin's arm today, that's good news for TCU. He was thrown into the mix earlier this year, Casey Paul Hall was the starter, had legal troubles, left school, and now Boykin, the redshirt freshman, has been guiding the way. And Boykin can't get much on the first play of the game, may have lost a yard there as Jamarcus McFarlane and Corey Nelson came in. You know, Tess, when you watch Javon Boykin, you can see he has all the necessary skills to be a good runner and a thrower. What he doesn't have right now is experience. And so a lot of this game here is coming off from the sideline. This is going to come down from Jared Anderson, their offensive coordinator. And I think in today's game, Jared, off, uh, Jared Anderson, their coordinator, he is the biggest part of their success on offense because he's going to have to call a great game. Go with an offset pistol here. The play action, Boykin gets it out of the backfield as the freshman B.J. Catalan just a gain of two chopped down by Javon Harris. So what are the challenges when you're calling a game like this? As you look at Jared Anderson, the thing that's a problem is it forces you to play in a small, tight box. He doesn't push the ball down the field. He wants to give him safe throws. You saw that stuff in the flat. You'll see double slants, throws like that, all safe throws. He wants to stay away from the middle of the defense where those safeties and linebackers can be a problem. It's coming off a well-managed effort in the win at Texas. Now facing a third and eight here is Boykin. Gets it to the near side, and that is complete for a first down to Sky Dawson, the speedy senior receiver. Gary Patterson, his 12th year here at TCU. Brought this program to great heights. You know the BCS success, of course, the Rose Bowl victory. Hang their hat on that. Bob Stoops, 14th season at Oklahoma, looking to see if he can get to yet another BCS Bowl. A school record 13 consecutive bowl games in his 13 years with the Sooners. See this doing already. See this now, Tess. What they're doing is they're spreading everybody out. They're trying to limit the number of guys who are inside that box. And they come with Tucker coming around from that slot position. Let's look at today's impact players for TCU brought to good Jared, the Galleria of jewelry. Well, Boyce is going to have to make some plays because they're going to go a lot of man to man, and he has the ability to be able to do it. Devontae Fields is a pleasure to watch. Just a freshman, getting better all the time. He's going to be a big key for TCU defensively. And Kenny Kane, their linebacker, he kind of runs everything in there. He's going to have to be on his top game today against that OU rushing game. Josh Boyce, you highlighted him. Seven receiving touchdowns on the year 22 in his career. That's number one at TCU. Second and eight, they keep it with Matthew Tucker. And he was met right away by Tony Jefferson, the team's leading tackler. He's number two in the Big 12. Because if you're watching, if you're watching at home right now and you're seeing every time somebody motions, you see a defender move. That's an indicator that they're playing a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. So Oklahoma is countering what TCU is doing. And they're saying this. 
We're going to play tight man to man all around the field until you prove that you can beat us with your arm. And until that time, we're going to keep the pressure on. See if Boykin can pass that test today. Redshirt freshman quarterback. Third and six now. Pressure off the edge against Boykin, and he quickly gets it out, but incomplete as it was off the hands and to the outside of B.J. Catalan. So Ethan Perry will come on to punt. There's Justin Brown, who's forced in the Big 12, fourth in the nation in punt return average, averages over 15 yards a return. There's a pretty stiff wind in this in this game today. Brown with the fair catch at the 20 gives us a chance to check in with Shannon Spake. Well, Joe, uh, Oklahoma quarterback Landry Jones just one week removed from leading his team to that overtime win against Oklahoma State. He threw for 500 yards. It was his last game at Norman against a rival team. And he said afterwards there was certainly some mental and physical exhaustion. I spoke to him earlier in the week and asked him what he's going to say to his players to get them ready for this game. He said nothing. He said every guy on this field knows what's on the line. A Big 12 title and the possibility to play in a BCS bowl game. They know what they have to do. They have to win. Big 12 career leader in passing yards is Landry Jones. Over 16,000 in his career now. And he opens up the game with a completed pass for seven yards that time as he found Justin Brown. You watch Landry Jones, you see a quarterback who has all the requisite strengths to perform high at this level and to the next level. There's one small thing that he has that he has to get better at. What's that, Matt? And that is he doesn't necessarily handle pressure up in his face very well. At times he gets nervous feet. He's gotten better, particularly at the end of the season. But that's the one thing you got to do to him. TCU has a couple ends that can get after you, too. He's on the ground this time. Trey Millar, the fullback, who runs like a tailback. And it'll make for a third and short. You know, that guy right there, Jay Millard, I, you know, I saw him a year ago, and I'm watching this year, and I think his best football is still coming. I think he's a versatile guy. He's, a, he's got some big size. He can run like a tailback, and he can block as a fullback, and he catches the ball well. Yeah, Miller had a 61-yard touchdown run earlier this year against K-State. Third and two. Jones. Quickly out of the backfield, Miller, and he makes one man miss. The first down and then lowers a shoulder again. Jason Barrett. Watch Trey him Miller. finish the run, Joe. This is, hey, all you high school players out there, this is how you finish a run. Watch him. He's going to come up, get rid of that. Now watch him lower his shoulder and finish all the way through, run right through. That's outstanding. Damian Williams now as TCU surges into that offensive backfield. That was Chucky Hunter. Big 300 pound sophomore, four and a half tackles for loss now on the year for Hunter. If TCU's defensive front, if they can get pressure and control the run game with their four down people, that's a that's great news for that TCU defense. Williams comes out of the backfield in second and 15 as that is incomplete. <laughs> One of the big keys to what they do defensively today is just a freshman, number 95, Devontae Fields. Devontae Fields is a big-time recruit. Everybody wanted him. He showed up at TCU because he wanted to be here. This is a guy you can build a program around. He's got the sacks. He's got movement. He's got great feel. Has a little bit of Charles Haley in him, which I really like to see. Third and 15. Jones checks down and out of the backfield. Williams unable to get much there. Only out to the 44 yard line. So Oklahoma will be punting. Tackle by Sam Carter there as he stayed with the back. Just all the games that we've watched this season, Joe, I got to say, Gary Patterson. And his staff, this might be one of the best coach teams in all of college football. They do not 
beat themselves. Dress way. He's got a good leg as we've seen all year long. And it bounces into the end zone. So both defenses doing their job. 56 yard punt. Horn Frogs back on offense when we return. This is Dr. Pepper Championship Week. And in spake with you on a beautiful day here in Fort Worth, the renovated Amon G. Carter Stadium, where moments ago Gary Patterson had a little passionate exchange with his punt returner, Sky Dawson, Matt. Well, this is just good, strong coaching and hard coaching. And Sky Dawson set your feet on the 10 yard line, that's what you do. And if it goes over your head, you let it go. Well, it didn't. But he did one thing. He drew the coverage to the other side and was fortunate that the ball went into the end zone. Coach Patterson is just reminding him the fundamentals win. Trevon Boykin. Empty set for the TCU quarterback. who's going to keep it himself and not find much at all as he was met by David King, who's been dealing with a bad ankle this week, the senior defensive end for the Sooners. Beautiful day, but a bit windy. That wind has been... They're going strong right to left in pregame. We were watching the kickers try to test themselves a bit, Matt. We'll see if it plays a role here. Obviously, TCU, a little more ground-oriented offensively. We know Landry Jones, he's been throwing it nonstop the past two weeks. Well, and that's the thing with TCU. They can't be one-dimensional, Joe. They've got to be more than just a running team if they're going to have any success. Here's Dean now. Andre Dean able to get to the corner and dive ahead. He'll just be a yard short. There's a lot of things you see with TCU, but like I mentioned, they can't be one dimensional. They have to find balance in that fast game. And then they're going to get tight man coverage. We're seeing that already. So they've got to be able to have a guy beat that man coverage. And then defensively, they've got to get pressure on Landry Jones, particularly up inside. And if they have that, they'll start seeing success as this game goes on. Show an empty set here on third and one, but Catalan now in motion in the slot. And now he joins Boykin. And he's going to get the first down and a good run to the outside as Josh Boyce, the receiver, was a capable blocker out in front. Yes, now all our fans sitting at home, I want you to watch a couple things. As soon as you start seeing motion and you see this and they're all lined up, that's your indicator. It's all man to man and they're watching the same things. And so you can run away from one defender. But the main key is all the guys who are locked up in man to man. You've got to block them. The guy who has you, you've got to get on him. And once you get on them, you'll be able to run away from your coverage. Now Catalan coming to the other side, but this time he is tackled immediately by Javon Harris. Catalan, the team's leading rusher this season as a freshman. He was an early enrollee, went through spring ball, and then they had all the issues. Ed Wesley left school, decided to test the pro waters. Wayman James was injured, perhaps their best running back. Matthew Tucker missed time. So it was Catalan who had to step up. And he has. And and now some of these numbers that you watch today, they're getting, they're good, solid numbers. Keep in mind now. This is very one dimensional this offense and to be able to get those things when they know you have to run is even more impressive. Boykin to pass here looking over his options. Now he tucks. And not much there at all. As okay. Dooley was able to find Boykin. Yes, I'm, I'm loving watching this because there's a lot of good things going on. First of all you see this outside they're stacking. That's to help the receivers get separation. And now here, if it's not there, they want you to pull it down and take off and run. Jared Anderson will live with that as an offense. He doesn't want negative plays. You want positive plays. But if it's not there, try to use your feet and win. Third and 12 now. A lot of manageable situations for the redshirt freshman Boykin. Here's a third and 12 thrown incomplete to the outside of Matthew Tucker. Aaron Franklin got pressure on Boykin. At one point, this TCU offense is just going to have to man up and run straight at eight and nine man fronts, and they're going to have to win. And if they can do that, Joe, they will have success. If they can't, 
it's going to be a long I, day. I thought Anderson was very honest with us yesterday when he said to us, I don't think we can just line up and manage the game we did against the way we did against Texas. No, they couldn't. But he knows going. he needs some big plays here exactly. and there. Barry's punt. Yielded by Brown and met right away. Good special teams coverage by Deontay Gray. Deontay Gray quickly able to get downfield and make the play. A little holiday themed daily cattle drive to Fort Worth Stockyards, downtown Fort Worth. We're not far away here at Amon G. Carter Stadium and TCU. Important game when it comes to the shape of the BCS Bowls that'll be announced tomorrow night, Oklahoma. Trying to win the Big 12 or get themselves in that large spot. Folks at K-State and Clemson watching on closely. Landry Jones. And that goes to Justin Brown. And now they're saying incomplete as he was unable to hold on to it. Kevin White had the coverage there. Let's check in with Reese. Joe Test time for the Taco Bell Studio Update Conference USA Championship game. Central Florida and Tulsa. Tulsa, Cody Green, Thomas Robertson for the touchdown. 7-0. Tulsa won the regular season meeting. Game is on ESPN2. Of course, you can keep up on Watch ESPN as well. This is another part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week, a rematch there in Conference USA. Jones looked like there was some contact there, but no call as Kenny Stills was covered by Jason Barrett. Go back to that first down play and watch at the end. Now you have to be able to secure the ball in, foot is down, and then Justin Brown has to be able to keep it all the way through. The ball came out, and that's why it's an incompletion. Sets up this big third down. He went to Brown on first down, Stills on the second down, and now it's time for this. TCU defense to come up with a big third down play. Oh, nice. Jones and on the backfield is Williams, but he's tackled that time by Sam Carter. So a fourth down and the punt team comes back on for Oklahoma. Carter can go up and, and thank Devontae Fields because Devontae Fields just on the outside, you want to watch this. What he does natural. This is where he has a little bit of Charles Haley in him. He has a natural inside move, Joe. And you cannot be an effective outside rusher if you don't take the inside. He does it well. This is not a good punt at all by Tress Way, but it takes an Oklahoma bounce and then is fielded by Sky Dawson. And he is tackled at the 30 yard line. Scoreless here in Fort Worth early. Coverage being provided by MetLife today. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do this. On a beautiful day here in the Metroplex, Fort Worth, Texas. So much on the line on this championship Saturday. How will the Big 12 play out? TCU won 28 of 29 home games and now has lost three straight Big 12 home games. DJ Catalan trying to test the middle. Of that Oklahoma defense, just a gain of two and a half. So look, this is what this is what's going on here throughout the two series. Okay, TCU is going to struggle throwing the football. Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator, knows he's going to enjoy an advantage in tight man coverage, and that gives you an extra defender down in the box, and that will account for the quarterback. And so, what TCU has to be able to do is they have to get to third and about four. They, have, they can't be third long. If they stay third and manageable, then his feet become a factor. Third and long hasn't served Boykin well. Catalan, nothing there. Just a yard that time as he is driven back by Stacy McGee and David King. Javon Boykin is going to have to make some plays throwing the football. And here we are in a third and five. Okay, so now third and five ish to six. It's a little bit longer. This offensive line is not a group that is real strong up front. So they're going to, the inside running games is going to be tough. But Mike Stoops, he knows he has an advantage right now outside in the coverage. 
Empty set for Boykin. Boyce is in the slot to the top. Most reliable receiver for TCU. Boykin pumps once and then throws incomplete out of bounds. Pressure came that time from Gino Grissom and Frank Shannon. Let me show you, Tess, what exactly what's going on. Okay, here's a big picture. You got you got one, two, three on three receivers. You got one, two on the outside. That means this guy right here, he's your free defender. He's your extra guy. And that's who he's taking care of. And he's the one who puts pressure. You still have a man free down the middle. You're manned up across the board. And you have an extra defender to be able to account for your quarterback. That's bad news for TCU. Barry punts away, and it's off the side of his foot and sails right into his teammates on the near side. Offenses yet to find their gear. 258 remaining on a beautiful campus here in Fort Worth. 21 yard punt, that's it. Oklahoma will start from the 44 after just a 21 yard punt by Ethan Perry. And we have a strong wind today. You could almost see as he was dropping it onto his foot, the wind shift the ball a little bit, went off the side of the foot. So good starting field position for Oklahoma. Play action now. Landry Jones, a lot of time. He's going deep for Kenny Stills. And a flag comes in as Chris Hackett tried to stay with Kenny Stills. Pass interference, number one of the defense. Yeah, there's no question that he hit it before it happened. Hackett in the middle of the field, just coming inside out. He ran right past Everett. Stills, I'm a big Stills fan. I liked him from a year ago. I wanted to see him take a step. I haven't really had have a chance to really study him like you want to, but I think he has all the things you need to be a big time player. Remember, he had that four touchdown game against West Virginia. Jones Millard out of the backfield. Good target there, nine yards. Shannon. Well, I spoke with Landry Jones this week about his favorite receiver, who his go to guy is. He has so many options. He told me Kenny Stills is the guy. He says he feels most comfortable with him. They've spent a lot of time playing together, and he's his go to. That would make perfect sense, Shay, because you have Justin Brown on the outside and Saunders. Those guys are new. But Stills is a guy who he started to get a feel for at the end of last year and has continued into this year. Give him the mark for a first down there on the reception by Miller. Brennan Clay now, big hole on the left side of the line, and he goes for nine yards before being cut down by Hackett. Nice eyes by Brennan Clay. And the defense showed its hand a little bit. They started to show what they were going to do in terms of a stunt, and then he just cut back. He saw it right away. He's getting the ball deep in the backfield, so the vision is very good, and he just cut it back to his left. Play on second one. He'll have the first down as he rolls inside the 15-yard line, taken down by Kane and Carter. The strength of TCU's defense are their defensive ends. Devontae Fields, 95. Stan Mapanga on the outside, number 90. On the inside, they're, they're solid players. Where they really need to be better is in the linebacking court. They don't see things as well as you'd like to see, and they need to be aggressive. Now, 54 will be aggressive at times, but they've got to be more consistent. This time to the 11-yard line, Damian Williams. And that's Kenny Kane, number 51. Now, that's the one backer that has good experience. And now, he sees things, and he believes his eyes. And that's a, guy that, and that's a, a, a great advantage when that's called experience, when you start to see things and you believe it. A lot of guys see things and don't quite believe what they see, and it makes them a step slower, and then you don't make the play. Jones now out of 
of the backfield. Touchdown, Damian Williams. That's nice touch by Landry Jones. They're playing in a zone. And Derek Kindred, number 26, is kind of in between. So he's got to be able to get depth. There's three things as a defender you have to control. Your width, your depth, and your hips. Landry Jones read that perfectly, recognized the lack of width, and made a nice touch throw. And Hunnicutt puts it through. 7 nothing Sooners. Check in with Reese Davis in the studio. Reese. Joe, time for Sports Center right now, presented by Discover Card. And after Oklahoma State lost that heartbreaker in Bedlam, they're behind against Baylor. Eddie Lackey, who took one back 55 yards for a score last week against Texas Tech, the pick six. 10 3 Bears up on the Pokes. Thanks, Reese. And Landry Jones here in Fort Worth, tying Ty Detmer for the fifth most in major college football history as the records continue for the senior from New Mexico. Now 28 touchdown passes on the year. Trying my old friend Ty Detmer out of BYU. He lives down here in Texas. He had a prolific career at BYU. Of course, Heisman Trophy winner and then on to the next level. And just watching Landry Jones throw. That was nice touch, great awareness, recognized the zone right away. You can see all the things that it takes. He has all the ingredients to be an outstanding player, and he is an outstanding player. Brandon Carter decides to come out. And that decision only gets him to the 14 yard line. Of course, Sunday night on ESPN, what everybody will want to know. Who gets in? BCS polls, the Discover Card BCS selection show, Sunday at 8.30 on ESPN. You can also see it live on your Watch ESPN app. If you're out and about, big question concerning Oklahoma and K-State, who will be the Big 12 champion? What will be the effect with what Northern Illinois did last night where they'll be in an at-large for Oklahoma or could it be Clemson if TCU could do something special here at home today Sky Dawson and he slips down as well as being met by Javon Harris so Tess this is what Jared Anderson the offensive coordinator for TCU is realizing he's not going to be able to win inside against that defensive front and so he's trying to run outside all the time into those DBs. The corners are making a, are doing a nice job from Oklahoma of making tackles. Jones was able to find Williams. That's the difference right now. End of one. Seven nothing. Sooners on top looking for a Big 12 title. Horrible news out of Kansas City oh, as we terrible. welcome you back here to Fort Worth. Oklahoma up 7 0. Boykin's going to go deep here, well off the mark, but the first time that he's tested things downfield because Matt, most have been shortened to the outside so far from the redshirt freshman. Yeah, and now this, that, that was a nice play just to throw it deep to let them know because what you're saying is he's not pushed the ball down the field. They've been all throws to the outside. They're easier throws for a young quarterback to see. And he hasn't had good success. The reason he hasn't had success is because the coverage from Oklahoma, and they're just all over him. It's just tight man coverage, and they're forcing him to throw into a small window. That's an excellent game plan by Stoops. Boykin has missed his last four passes. And this time, it's complete to Cam White, but it'll be well short of the line to make. Don't forget, Tess, Boykin can't. He's a runner. I mean, and and the plan wasn't for him to be the thrower. But that's what you have. And so now this is where Gary Patterson's got to earn his money, and he has all season. He's had a fantastic year. But right now, they're they're not enjoying any kind of an advantage 
in terms of athleticism on the outside. Oklahoma clearly has that advantage. Remember punter Ethan Perry struggled last time out there with the win. Now he has the wind going with him. And it's a better effort. And Justin Brown falls down and the ball goes right past him. Tess, there's three things in the kicking game. Don't be off sides, don't rough the kicker, and don't let the ball hit the ground. The holding penalty on Oklahoma, so they're backed up even further there to the 13 yard line. Brennan play in the backfield with Landry Jones. Play action. And Jones threw it to the outside of Jalen Saunders. There's two contrasting styles of defense here on the field, Joe, and it and it's because each coach has what they have. It's excellent coaching. It's what you really love to see. And so Gary Patterson doesn't have the horses to be able to line up man to man. So he's playing zone. And so he's keeping his safety deep and he's saying, OK, Landry Jones, we think you're going to throw the ball all over the field. We're going to give you a light box and want you to run at it. Second and ten. Tried to go underneath the Sterling Shepard and it'll make for a third and ten as Sam Carter was right on top of Sterling Shepard. That Sam Carter read that absolutely brilliantly. They went with the motion back outside so the run game is gone. And so now you have to jump your coverage. See there's no run yet. Landry Jones is not going to be a runner. He just sees it right from the beginning. Sets up this big third wall. Frog fans on their feet here looking for a stop on third and long. Jones with time gets it out and incomplete. And his Horn Frogs defense has played pretty well today. That's Gary Patterson's strength. He's a defensive guy. And he's a schemer. And he's a guy who loves to see what you give him. And then he does a really excellent job of making adjustments game time as it goes on. So Tressway foot into his own end zone, punting away into the wind as it takes a bounce for Oklahoma and Sky Dawson fields it off the bounce and is taken down at the 40 yard line. TCU will be back on offense trailing by a touchdown here at home when we return. There's Austin Woods, a lineman for Oklahoma, one of the true warriors of college football, diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, went through treatments, Matt, while still playing football, going through camp. Darius Brown there, and a flag comes in late. As Brown had the reception out to the 47 yard line. See Austin Woods with the beat cancer sign on his tape there. After Such the an inspiration to teammates. Personal foul with the late hit, number 69 of the offense. The down will count. It will be 15 yards from where the play ended. Second down. So the reception's good, but then they mark it back with the personal foul against Gary Patterson's team. Yeah, and that's one of the things that you normally don't see with the Patterson coach team. They normally do not beat themselves, and that's that's a mistake. Tough to overcome. They they need it to stay, and they this offense needs to stay out of third and longer than five. They've got to get to third and manageable. Javon Boykin only 23 yards passing today. Four of eight here on second and 18. And he keeps it out just past the 35 yard line. It'll be third and about 14 there. Mike Stoops the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma. He sees exactly what he has right now. And he knows he has some advantages, and we've documented them. The other advantages he has is on the inside of that defensive line. That defensive front with McFarland in there and Casey Walker, and just the big bodies, they're not allowing any kind of inside run. So everything has gone to the edge. And the one area that you see better this week than you've seen in the past is they've tackled much better. They've not tackled well this season. They bring pressure against the freshman quarterback. He launches it downfield. 
and overthrows Brown. Third and 14, they came after him. They came after him because they know they have an advantage on the outside. And then, and then the great advantage he has, you can keep the safety still in the middle of the field. Man everything up and still give them help in the middle. And that's exactly what they did with Tony Jefferson. It's a tough puzzle to crack right now for this TCU staff. Third straight three and out for TCU. Harry punting with the wind, and this is just a rocket shot. It bounced at the two and all the way in. Five possessions, five punts for TCU. That one went for 64 yards on a beautiful day on this Fort Worth campus. Some of the images from all the way back on September 22nd when K-State was then just number 15. Little did we know what they would turn into this year all the way up to number one before taking a step back and now it's all on the line today. Oklahoma has to win this game against TCU. They'll get a share of the Big 12 title but then they need to root for Texas tonight to get that automatic BCS berth and the Big 12 title. Of course at large could also happen for the Sooners. There are Clemson fans watching closely. So many scenarios that could still play out. Here's Brennan Clay. And a good run by Clay for a first down. Let's check in the studio with Reese Davis. No good, it looks like, for another touchdown. 20, no, they got it. 24 threes to score. Yeah, Reese, that offense down there at Baylor, Nick Florence, they've been doing it all year long. That special night against the Wildcats a couple weeks back. Andre Jones and that Sooners offense now here in the second quarter going into the wind. And he is 0 for 4 passing against the wind, facing a second and 10 here. Brennan Clay now. And Clay. Taken down that time by Chris Hackett and Kenny Kane. Shannon? Well, Joe, moments, moments before Landry Jones led his team back onto the field, he looked over at Clay. He nodded. They then walked out. You know, uh, Landry Jones told me before the game that he wasn't going to verbally motivate this team. They knew what was on the line, and really he has stood by that. Until that last possession, it was the most fired up I've seen him. He came over just shaking his head, talking to his receivers, but looking good now. And now Shannon facing another third down. Third and six. Clay comes out of the backfield, leaving it empty. He goes underneath, and Shepard can't nice. work his way for the line to meet. Instead, it was Olabode who did a good job of wrestling him down. Yeah, you heard me say nice, and why I said that is because that's a great open field tackle. He's got to make that play. They spread everybody out, and they're going to run him back underneath. And Olabode's, it's all on him. You either make it or you don't. And he made it. Tress Way's been skilled this year at getting opponents inside the 20s, had 17 this year. Let's see if he can do it here. And it just settles in at the 21. Joe, you can see what Oklahoma has done in the run game. You're gonna give it, here's the indicator. You can see this man. The safety's gonna spin down. He's your extra defender, Tony Jefferson. He's right there. And then they're not adverse to moving people. Again, they come with the extra defender, and the blitz are on the outside. And because you have that extra man, they've enjoyed a lot of success against the rush against TCU here today. You know how the Oklahoma defense. Struggled in recent weeks in those high scoring games. West Virginia and Oklahoma State. TCU trying to get going here. Andre Dean, nothing much there. Just a yard and a half. Well, we're going to be saying Tony Jefferson's name a lot. You could see that's what they call spinning down Joe. And Tony Jefferson sees it and he comes right down. He's unaccounted for in your front when you're blocking. That's safety. They don't count on him being there. And because, like I mentioned, they have that great coverage on the outside, Jefferson's basically today a free defender. He can go to the ball, and he's done it very well today. Could be the first Oklahoma player to lead the Big 12 in tackles. He's number two right now, just trailing by a couple. The 
They go with the end around here. And Josh Boyce only able to get to the 26 yard line, tackled by Demontre Hurst. Jared Anderson, the offensive coordinator and play caller for this TCU offense, he's tried all kinds of things. You've seen stacks, you've seen spread out. He's tried to buck up and run inside. He's tried a couple of trick plays. You can see with that, with the, with the reverse. All of those things have gone for naught because this defensive front of Oklahoma is manhandling them inside. That's going to be a tough road for him today. Going to have to get a little creative. Third down and six. Ravon Boykin. Here comes the pressure again. This time he gets it complete. Can Boyce get free? Yes. A first down for TCU. And so what wins for you? Two things. First, they brought pressure. He was able to gain some time. And then on the outside, you make an individual play. Make a miss. Great move. Get up the field and sets up this first down. So the individual success is going to have to overcome collectively the lack of schematic success. Josh Boyce is their playmaker. He's got some good skills. He's got a little bit of make you miss, which you saw right there. And he's a guy who can count on catching the ball. He's going to have to win in one-on-ones. AJ Catalan. And Catalan able to get to the 42 that time. So he was met by Frank Shannon, who they watched him warm up today. Frank Shannon's been dealing with a bad ankle. Gave it a go. Had seven tackles a week ago against Oklahoma State. And on a day like this, Dr. Pepper Championship Saturday here. Big 12 on the line. Give it all you got. If you look, they have all DBs out there right now. And Shannon is the lone linebacker in the middle. The rest of them are all DBs, and they're just covered. Now, you see, you're going four wides with one back remaining. That's what you should be in. They run option to the near side. And Boykin keeps it, stretches it out, and can't find anything as he was run down that time by Frank Shannon. Inside out for Shannon, but the key to the play is on the outside, and it's the corners. Demontre Hurst is out there, number six. You got some, you got some good people. You see Boykin favoring that right side as he came back into the huddle there. He was banged up badly after that K-State game. Got a little bit of a break before they played Texas, but still not 100% they admitted to us. Third and five. And he threw it Dean's way before Dean ever had a chance to even look back. He wanted to get rid of that ball, Matt. Yeah, and Dule was peeling. And so he had to get the he had to get the ball in his hands quick, but and Dule is called what we what we say peeling. He's gonna come up the field right down here. He's gonna come up the field, and then as soon as he sees that back, he's gotta jump him right away, which he did just perfectly. So Perry back on to punt. Punting with the wind, and he goes with the reverse rotation, seeing if he could make it stick. And did he? Oh, missed it. No, touchback. Nice, nice effort, though. Almost got that corner there. Seven nothing Sooners here in Fort Worth. News out of Kansas City. That Coach Romeo Cornell, Scott Pioli, and that organization will be having to deal with so much today and in the coming days. Oklahoma up. 7-0 on TCU. Landry Jones quickly gets it out to Jalen Saunders, and Saunders with nine yards there, the transfer from Fresno State, who's been very productive for Oklahoma. Oh, Jalen Saunders. That, that looks like big Lake Bell is coming in, number 10, but Jalen Saunders is a guy you want to get the ball in his hands as much as you can, just like they're going to get the ball in Bell's hands right here. 6'6", 254-pound quarterback who often comes in in short yardage situations. Second and one. And that's exactly why. 
course last week he scored the game tying touchdown with just seconds remaining on a thrilling fourth down run in Bedlam. 11 rushing touchdowns on the year. For the big Blake Bell trots off and lets Landry Jones get back to business. He can still throw it. Bell, Bell can throw the ball and that's just the piece of the puzzle that you when he does come in you go OK they're going to run it but what if and that's usually what holds people back a little bit. Offset pistol now as Williams shifts out of it and they go with the fullback Miller and he's tackled by Carter out to the 36 yard line. Sam Carter came to TCU to play a little quarterback but he's been a tremendous leader defensively for the Horned Frogs and that interception last week against Texas sealed that win down there in Austin. You know he has Tess he's got good instincts. Yeah, he's he knows his assignments and all that but there's some things when you have good instincts you can't teach that he's got that Damian Williams on second and six he breaks a tackle lowers the shoulder and he's going to be close depending on the mark here he's going to be short let's see looks like they're going to mark him just short let's see if we don't see the belldozer again and here he comes the thing that's so impressive about what Blake Bell does and this Oklahoma offense when they get in this position right now they're telling you listen TCU we're going to run the ball right at you and we're going to see if you can stop us. By the way he's just as big as the fullback who lines up in front of him Aaron Ripkowski. <laughs> Same weight. Here goes the bell dozer. And another first down for the Sooners. Four and a half minutes to go here in the first half. TCU's had little offense, but their defense has been trying to contain Landry Jones and Blake Bell and the Sooners. Just that Damian Williams touchdown pass reception. The difference in the game so far. Brennan Clay now in at running back. And that ball is intercepted. Sam Carter. Can he get the block out in front? Inside the 15, inside the 10. And Carter lunges to the six. It'll be first and goal, TCU. You know what got on the pick? Just what we were talking about, instinct. It was man, he knew exactly where he had to go, so he undercut that throw and came down with it. Landry Jones didn't get rid of it quick enough and Carter made him pay for it. Watch Carter. He's right here, number 17. His coverage is actually back inside. As soon as he saw that, he undercut Justin Brown and took the whole thing away. Now let's see if this TCU offense can't get seven yards. They haven't generated much all day. Six punts, only three first downs, but now this thing is teed up for them. Boykin to the goal line and in. What did they say? At some point they would meet made individuals to make big plays. There you go. Carter made a really big one and Boykin cashed in. See how Boykin did not stop turning his legs. He was getting in no matter what. Jadon Oberchrome ties it up. A 42 yard interception return by Carter. And then the freshman quarterback with his third rushing touchdown of the year. Tie game in Fort Worth. This is great defense. Here's the matchup that Oklahoma is looking for. Now, TCU knows that. Now I want you to see this running back right here. These two guys have him. If he goes here, you take him. If he comes this way, you take him. The one who isn't in coverage, he rolls back underneath. Now he sees it right away. They basically baited that throw. And Carter played it perfectly. He read the back. As soon as it went away from him, he undercut it, 
Landry Jones threw right to him. That's that's great defense. And then Boykin with the touchdown run. And now a little energy here in Fort Worth with this crowd. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Shannon Spake with you here as Oklahoma needs a win to claim a piece of the Big 12 and have a chance at the title depending on what happens with K-State and Texas tonight. Of course, Kansas State fans, Clemson fans, root for TCU here. A lot of scenarios that could play out. K-State clinches a BCS berth with an Oklahoma loss. Clemson possibly in play for an at-large position in the BCS Bowls. So much still to unfold all day on ESPN and ABC. They're going to give a little help here for Overcrom to kick off. His 30th touchback of the year. Let's check in with Reese. And Joe on the Lexus halftime report. Bowl positioning also up for grabs Oklahoma State and Baylor. Old Cowpokes having a little trouble getting over Bedlam, apparently. Everything's rosy for Stanford, but who will they play in the Rose Bowl? We'll look ahead to the Big Ten title game. And, of course, the Alabama-Georgia matchup in the SEC championship game. Roy Marker here. We'll see you in just a few. Sounds good, Reese. Look forward to it. You know, they talked about folks with Oklahoma about playing the week after Bedlam, an emotional drain and that thrilling game. And you see now what Landry Jones has done going into the win. We told you the win would be a big factor today. No problem there as he completes it to Saunders. That was just easy and over the middle, finding Saunders streaking. Nice little play action. Saunders back down inside. You run that play action at that second level. They have to honor the run. And he's right behind you fast. Up tempo now for Oklahoma. And he gets it complete again. This time to Justin Brown to midfield. I believe this really is where Landry Jones is at his best. They give a little, they give more of the offense to him. They're still getting it from the sideline. But when they go up that up tempo, real fast stuff, they put it on Landry Jones. And he's got, uh, he, he does it pretty well. Always interesting to see how a veteran responds after a costly mistake. No catches for Kenny Stills right now. Number four is star receivers. He's up top here on your screen, second and three. And he gets it complete again to Saunders, who's been steady and reliable. And that's a first down for Oklahoma. Under three minutes to play in the half. That's Saunders. That's a nice looking slot receiver. He's got excellent quickness. And there is Sterling Shepard who slides down at the 22 yard line. So what happens now is communication is the key. Communication defensively. You got to get your calls in. Everybody's got to be on the same page. And when you go up tempo and pace, you're playing against pace and then you're defining tempo and here's Brown now ball came loose at the end there I think they're gonna call him down. Saying he was down looked like Kevin White came in and got a hold of it they're gonna try to snap it as quickly as possible see if Jones can get up there and snap this ball you be the judge yeah he's down his elbow was down And they go with a wide receiver screen, Saunders. And Saunders close to the 10 yard line. Derek Kindred came out on Saunders defensively. That's a heck of a play by Kindred. Before he got snap, blocked. We were paid by the replay booth. There is no play. The previous play is on the further. So they're going to say that that play is void as they go back to the previous play. They have a system do the officials where they get the buzz when the booth wants to take a look. Well it looked like his forearm hit the ground before the ball came out which would mean he's a downed Blair. Rick Lumayer now will look at the previous play when Kevin White came in looking to strip this ball away. Remember the call on the field is that Brown was down before the ball came out. So they will need the indisputable video evidence to show otherwise. I think the first look was the most definitive look. 
and that's a nice job of getting the ball out. However, you can see the elbow down, ball still in control. Well, you got the whole Knee, bottom of the leg, down. you got the elbow, and the and ball then, is still in control. And then he rips it out. So I think that's a good call by the officials. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It shall be second down. Now what that does, though, is it nullified the reception that had brought the ball close to the 10 yard line, which would have been a first down for Oklahoma. So it gives pause for a moment and the TCU defense can catch their breath. Stacked up that up tempo worked beautifully for Oklahoma, Matt. Yeah, it did, and it is. You can see the stack on the top side of the receivers. That's to get your defenders to back off. You're one on one down below. Damian Williams. And Williams just lowers that shoulder for a Sooners first down. That was Olabode who came up, and Damian Williams sent him back. Good stuff by Williams. He's gotten better as the season's gone on. Powerful back he is. Andrew Jones, five for five on this drive for 60 yards after throwing that interception previous. Once again, Williams. And this time he's stacked up. After just about a yard and a half, that was Davion Pearson, the 300 pounder, meeting him. Pearson's a big old. He doesn't make a lot of tackles, but what Pearson does is he provides a point. Every defense needs a point you can defend off of. Pearson does an excellent job. He eats up blockers inside. And that's, you know, that's what a big D tackle should look like. He should have like grips and stuff in his <laughs> shoulder pads. That game means a place. lot to him. He's an Oklahoma native. They only have two on the entire roster. Second and eight. Jones. Off the hands of Kenny Stills. And there's a flag down. Oh, and there's a little bit of a fight going on among some linemen back at the 18 yard line. That's a billet out there. And Tyrus Thompson and, and Thompson. Stansley Maponga. I'm sorry, Maponga. I said a billet. Sorry. Yeah, Maponga, number 90. He's about a 265 guy a pound man going against Thompson. Thompson's a big man. Now Thompson's helmet came off in that altercation. Or was off rather. Look at the bottom right of your screen there. You see Thompson on top of Maponga. And he throws a punch, Matt. <laughs> After the play Friday over, night fights, Joe, you're right in. That's what you do. Number 71 of the offense. The penalty will be 15 yards. The player lost his helmet after the play was over. He can remain in the game. Watch the right hand of Tyrus Thompson. He has Maponga underneath him, and watch what he does. So it backs him all the way up to the 24 yard line. Now they can get a first down. It's a long one but it's not third and goal third and 23. You see third and 23. I want to watch the rush that Maponga has on Thompson right now. And timeout. The timeout is called. This is the first time out of the second half called by Oklahoma. Timeout shall be for 30 seconds. So an opportunity for Oklahoma to respond after TCU came, got that interception and scored. You know, it's what some of the coaches thought it would be. TCU struggling to find things offensively, and it took a big play to get them on the board. And that's, you know, we kind of thought that you're going to have to have a big individual play, and you were able to get it from Carter. And then you knew that Oklahoma defensively were, was going to enjoy an advantage athletically on the outside, Joe. And it really is still going to come down to whether or not Boykin can make a play with his arm. That's still going to be a big piece of it. Right now, we're going to see if Landry Jones can make the play. And he's made a lot of them all season long. 
third now and 23. That 15 yard penalty pushed him back. And now can Landry Jones make something of it? How about that? Jalen Saunders. Touchdown Sooners. And an outstanding throw by Landry Jones. Why? Great protection. He has the time, step and throw, and Saunders does exactly what he's supposed to do. Look at his throw. Small window, tight coverage. Coverage wasn't bad, but Saunders beat Carter. They got pushed all the way back to the 24-yard line. But it didn't phase Landry Jones. And that was a nice response by Oklahoma. After the interception and the quick strike by TCU. And now Landry Jones adds to what has been just a sensational finish to his year as he's been right there among record-setting performances in FBS history. Now he's up there with Case Keenum and Kellen Moore in the top five, 122 touchdown passes in his career. You know what was the most impressive thing on that third down, Joe? Third and 23, and Landry Jones had great poise. And that's what you're going to see in this. Sitting in the pocket, when he moves, he's been able to find people. They go play action stuff. He knows where it is. He throws with touch down the sideline. His one mistake was the pick. Other than that, he has been money here today. He's been protected well, and when he hasn't, when he's had to buy time, he's still been able to do it. And that speaks to the poise that you've really seen the last half of the season. That's, I think, the difference in his game this year. And Bob Stoops last week went on a radio show and told anybody, hey, anybody criticizing Landry Jones, let me tell you where you can put that criticism. He's been defending his senior quarterback throughout over a thousand yards passing in the last two games. And he did really well with the pace there and the up tempo and directing a nine play 75 yard drive. And then when they got in the hole with the penalty still finding Saunders to pull it out. Brandon Carter now on the return. Carter still having his balance there, but only able to get out to about the 19 yard line. Beautiful day here in Fort Worth, and aerial coverage is being provided by MetLife. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do this. So much at stake today. Oklahoma, they win and they share the Big 12. But in an ironic twist, if they win, They'll be rooting for the Longhorns. Tough for some Sooners to swallow, but they'll be rooting for them to beat K-State and clinch that BCS berth, the automatic berth, and win the Big 12 outright. Of course, at-large status could still possibly make their way to the Sugar Bowl with a win today. So much to be decided on this final weekend of college football. Nothing much there as Gino Grissom was in on Boykin. To me, I think the biggest thing that I, I don't know if I expected it or not, but this defensive line of Oklahoma, they, to me, have dominated that TCU offensive front. I thought maybe they'd get a little bit more movement, but they haven't. They've just, they've crushed them here in this first half. The clock counts down. OU's going to get the ball to start the second half as well. And touchdown pass to Saunders. That was something for the Sooners there in that big hole after the penalty. Landry Jones continues to make history here, finishing up his senior season. Gary Patterson, this is the norm for him, gathers the troops, has a quick word before they go to the locker room. Here's Shannon. Well, Coach, your guys responded for that turnover with a touchdown. How does that uh, adjust the things you're going to say to them in this halftime locker room? Well, it's, it, it helps. Uh, definitely gives you some momentum going in at half. Landry was uh, great throwing that third down. Um, you know, put ourselves in a bad position, but fought our way out of it. You have limited them in their passing game. How have you kept them one-dimensional on that side of the ball? Well, we've been better against the run game than, than we have been lately, and that's getting them into some of those situations. And then we've been able to pressure and cover pretty well. Thanks, Coach. All right. 
Yeah, they've held Boykin only 34 yards passing. Couple of touchdown passes for Landry Jones. And the Sooners are up 14-7. Let's get you to Reese, Mark, and Lou back in the studio for the Lexus Halftime Report. Gentlemen, to, Green to defeat cancer. Landry Jones, couple of touchdown passes in the first half. Oklahoma looking to see if they can get themselves into a BCS Bowl. Joe Tessitore alongside Matt Millen. Seven-point lead for the Sooners. Oklahoma's offense, not what we saw the last two games out of them, but the TCU offense, I'm unable to get anything going. Well, back. one of the things we said, Tess, at the very begin, beginning of the game is they had to be more than one-dimensional in the run game, and they haven't been able to do that. They had to get something out of Boykin, and they haven't been able to do that to date. Now, having said that, this Oklahoma defense has played outstanding. Sure they've have. shut down the receivers on the outside, and they've taken away the inside run game. Needed that one big play to TCU just to get on the board. It was the interception return by Carter that set things up for Boykin. Landry Jones will start the second half like he did ended the first half with the ball in his hands with good protection. Remember TCU has struggled at home this year. Lost to K-State, lost to Iowa State, lost to Texas Tech, and now such a tough challenge with the Sooners. But then Clay on the return, and Clay is mauled at about the 11-yard line. Well, we talked about Landry Jones, what he did in the first half, and what it was was really good patience, and then a couple mistakes defensively. They're trying to box the inside receiver, and they lost track of Williams on the outside. Who didn't lose him was Landry Jones. Excellent patience. And then again here, this is the big third and long. And he's able to, because he has protection, nice patience, make that throw. And it was a picture-perfect throw. Moved himself into the top five in FBS career touchdown passes here this afternoon. And start on the ground with Williams. He has met right at the line of scrimmage. Shannon? Well, Joe, uh, Coach Patterson's message to his team during the half, it was pretty simple. He basically reminded them where they're playing. He said, you are at your stadium. At home, you have to go out, try to win this game, get some points on the board. Now, he said earlier in the week that the last two games of the season would be a measuring stick for his team. When I asked him about that, he kind of shrugged and said, hey, we're only seven points down. Yeah, playing Texas and OU back-to-back -back weeks. Second down, Jones steps up in the pocket and he's able to get that complete. Saunders breaks free. Jalen Saunders still spinning his way as he's able to get to the 34-yard line. They shook Sam Carter. They went to man-to-man -man coverage. And so Saunders on Carter, that's a tough deal. He has the coverage, finish it. How do you finish? You make the tackle. But Saunders with those great hips is able to get out of it. Jones. Back to work, but that was low intended for Kenny Stills. Who still doesn't have a catch yet. He had one, and they took it away with a penalty. Kenny Stills, of course, a great career. Leads the team in catches and yards. Guy who can really stretch the field. You can see that 36 straight games that he's had. And he'll get him. He'll get his throw here. We heard Shannon talking about he and Landry Jones being on the same page and having great comfort level with each other. So far, that hasn't shown up. Damian Williams, look at the hole off the left side of the line, and he is gone. Touchdown, Sooners. I mean, there was just nobody there. 66-yard touchdown run for Damian Williams. I'll show you the whole key. It's Lane Johnson, their left offensive tackle. He got the edge right away. He got the edge, and he was out the gate. Watch this block right there. Look at that. Watch him hook it. A little bit of a hold action going on out here. But Lane Johnson took care of it. And Williams, once he's in, has that green, you're not catching him. And the free safety, Elisha Olabo, is running off into coverage. And Williams was running right by him. Got to defend the edge, Tess. If you don't, that's what happens. Lane Johnson did a fantastic job, and Williams took advantage of it. 
That was the longest run allowed by TCU this season. Damian Williams, 66 yard. Inside the Big 12 today, Oklahoma up 21 7. And then tonight on ESPN, it is the ACC. The title will be on the line. Trying to get a spot on Discover Orange Bowl, the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship game, Florida State and Georgia Tech. 8 o'clock on ESPN, part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Of course, we have two Stoops brothers here. We have Mark, defensive coordinator down Florida State, just landed himself the Kentucky job. I saw that. That's a nice job. They will. They will do the necessary things to give him an opportunity to win. Bob and Mike so happy for him. Brandon Carter takes a knee. 14 point hole now for TCU. And Stoops, the first family of uh, college football for the better part of the past decade. You know, Mike had the run at Arizona. Now he joins Bob as defensive coordinator, and Mark's going to get his shot at Kentucky. Older brothers back home at Youngstown State where he's an assistant, but Mark's going to be an SEC head coach and see if he can get things going with the Wildcats. And it'll be doable. And this is a this is a good football family. They all played. They're all Ohio guys. They all they all like good, tough, physical football. And that's what I would expect down there in Kentucky because that's what Stoops' job here, Bob does with this Oklahoma group. Boykin looking for Sky Dawson. Well, you said at the start of this game, and I don't want to repeat myself, but I'm going to. Trevon Boykin, they could not be one dimensional. He had to be able to make some throws. To date, he's not been able to do that. Now, that's not solely his fault. He's got to get help on the outside. They've got to be able to beat this tight man coverage, which Oklahoma has been throwing on them all game long. And here it is again. Oh, they just bumped it out. So they're going to make zone. Tucker. And Tucker will have the first down for the Horn Frogs. And just to get people up to speed, the story with Trevon Boykin and the circumstances as to why he's even playing. Remember, they had running back injuries earlier this year, and Casey Paul Hall was the veteran quarterback. They actually moved Boykin to running back to prep for the week of Iowa State. Paul Hall got into his legal troubles. And Boykin was told, hey, we need you to be the starting quarterback. He had a day's notice to be the starting quarterback against Iowa State, so he's been the unexpected starter since week number five. That's when Casey Paul Hall got into trouble, withdrew from school, had legal troubles. So he's really been thrown into the fire here as a redshirt freshman. And that is off the hands of Brandon Carter. He's going to need a little help when he does get those balls out there. He can't drop that ball. I mean, that's... That's a nice play call. They got him on the edge. He can see things. It's all right in front of him. And you can see exactly what happened. They started nice, and then since then, they've, you know, they've struggled a little bit. But look then at they that came second, back with the next one second point, Texas. Yes. That's the biggest one. They're playing a lot of young people. Yeah, and they're young. Good one of, future, though. And one of that young, one of those young ones, Devontae Fields, I think he has a chance to be a stud. Tied with Texas for the most true freshman in the nation. They have 16 of them. Tucker again on the right side and Tucker gets it to the 45 yard line. Well, that big right tackle there. That's Teo Fabulge, number 59. He's, he's having a little success right now against that defensive end over there. Now one of the things I like is a big powerful guy but Tess I got to test up to him. I just like to say his name. Fabulge. Fabulge. Makes you want to say Gesundheit but I won't do that. Transfer from BYU. He's got the matchup with David King today. They like their right tackle also, the true freshman Collins. Got to get bigger and stronger, but he has excellent athleticism and good feet. But Favulice is the guy who's got some strength. Play clock was running down, so TCU is going to use a timeout here. This is the first timeout in the second half called by TCU. But a third and six when we return to Fort Worth. They're trailing by 14. implosion back in December 5 2010 so that they could throw 164 million dollars at this place and turn it into something that a glitzy Vegas resort would feel like a motel over it is spectacular the new Amon G Carter Stadium 
here on the campus of TCU where those founder suites go for a mere 15 million dollars a pop. Third down and six for the home team trailing by 14 in number 11 Oklahoma. Boykin pulls it down and then launches it downfield but he overthrew Sky Dawson so it'll be fourth down. But I like the effort and he had a throw that he wasn't quite sure of and following coaches instructions he pulled that bad boy down but then took a shot on the left side so I kind of like that you got to see more of that because he's going to have to take some shots here. It's only six of 14 on the day for 39 yards and in a two touchdown hole to the Sooners. Perry back on to punt. He's had a busy day out there. Brown just falls on it at the 16. Here's Reese. But. All right, it's time now for an innovative look brought to you by AT&T. Tonight we'll see Kansas State and Colin Klein against Texas. Now, it's not often that you're using the Baylor defense as an example of how to stop the run, but look at the good job the Bears did in assigning a number of guys to stop Klein. You might remember a year ago, Texas did an exemplary job holding Klein to a mere four yards rushing, held, tech, held Kansas State to just 117 yards, but Texas did win the game. And Reese, of course, K-State played TCU defense that we're seeing against Oklahoma today. They only put up 23 points, 23 to 10 win. Landry Jones, a couple of touchdown passes today against the Horned Frogs. Damian Williams, the 66-yard run, and now Brennan Clay getting some work out to the 22. When you talked about Stansley Maponga and Devontae Fields, the fine defensive ends for TCU, but not the day they were looking for, Matt. Yeah, one of the things we said on the front end was they had to be able to win that matchup. And Oklahoma had, conversely, win that matchup. Now, Maponga is a bigger kid, like 65-ish, maybe 70. Fields not as big, but more athletic. But the offensive tackles here today, Thompson 71, Lane Johnson 69, they've, they've been winning. Here's Miller and Trey Miller tried to reach ahead to that line of make maybe about a half a yard short as Chris Hackett was holding on to him. Lane Johnson there number 69 that, that left tackle he's pretty darn at Blake Bell's coming in number 10 but he's he's pretty athletic. It's good movement. And I think that's one of the things you have to be able to have against fields. Go with the short yardage jumbo package with Miller, Ripkowski, and Bell. Hesitates, waits for the block, and this time they stack up the Bell Dozer. <laughs> that was Olabode who came around and was able to find Blake Bell. Bell was waiting for his blocks. I want you to watch this, though, Tess. Look at this. Nobody up front, everybody making their reach. Look at this nice inside. They do a great job of scraping. They basically said, look, try to run the middle. We don't think you're going to. You're going to run the football. We think you're going to run over here. And they stopped them. Dressway punting with the wind here as Sky Dawson is back at his 30 to return. Wow. And this is a huge boot. Oh, and it almost stayed. It danced right on the goal line. A 75-yard punt by Tress Way. That is a season long. Had a 71-yarder against Texas Tech back in October. We want you to help us beat cancer. The V Foundation awards 100% of direct donations to fund cancer research. And those operating expenses they're paid for by an endowment fund. So join us in helping. You can go to JimmyV.org. You can call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. Of course, we know so many so affected. $100 million in research grants have been put forth by the V Foundation through the years. Boykin's going to take a shot downfield, and he's got it. Brandon Carter inside the 10. Touchdown. TCU instant offense all of a sudden is found. TCU was looking for a big play, Tess. And they're looking for success in the throwing game. 
and Boykin just hit a home run. Boy, did they need that. Eighty-yard touchdown toss. At some point, he had to find out. Brandon Carter helped him pass the test. TCU's right back in it. Okay. Brandon Carter moments ago, 80 yard touchdown reception as he sped right past the Oklahoma defense, and now it's back to a seven point margin. So it's sitting at home, he's going, Well, what the heck happened? Well, most of the time they've been playing man all day long, but in this one here, it's a combination zone, it looks like. He's going to kick back inside right here. They're going to go man up to the inside receiver with him. He's going to run right through this thing. And they go part play action, and that makes this bite here. And then once he gets to the top side, it's gone. And they just have great speed to the end zone. Two scoring drives of one play each for TCU. Let's see how upset defensive coordinator Mike Stoops is. Longest pass play allowed by Oklahoma this season. 80 yard touchdown. Brennan Clay now. And Clay wiggles his way out to the 27. You know TCU both their touchdowns one play drives remember they responded after the long interception return play play is slow to get up at the end of this kickoff return and then quickly after that punt and a touchback they strike again and clay is the backup running back had the game winning touchdown last week against Oklahoma State in overtime he's a big part of what they do offensively as the medical staff is tending to him. Go back and see what happened to Brennan Clay at the end of this return. You never really know, Tess. You can see, and there's always contact all over the place, but you never know. Sometimes it's the ground, sometimes it's a shoulder pad, sometimes a helmet. Sometimes a knee. We'll step aside. Sooners by seven here. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. 21-14 Oklahoma. Brennan Clay taking off the field. After being slow to get up after that kickoff return. TCU quick strike to get back in this game. Landry Jones in the Sooners offense. He's able to connect this time as he gets it to Jalen Saunders for a first down. You know, the last time that TCU scored with the big play, they had the interception return, and then they had the quarterback run for the touchdown. Oklahoma went up tempo, came right down the field. They responded well. Let's see if they do that again here. And Williams is met by Pearson, the Oklahoma native. He was the number one defensive tackle coming out of Oklahoma high school ball back in 2010. I like Pearson. We talked about him a little earlier. He looks like a D tackle should look, and he plays like one too. Real physical at the point. 
be active. You try to run inside stuff. Pearson's usually there. First, Damian Williams had that 66-yard touchdown run earlier. He's only had eight carries on the day. Jones, a couple of touchdown passes for the Sooners. And now they go empty. There's Williams out of the backfield. Jones over the middle. There's Kenny Stills. The 46. That's his first reception. Working on the backside against Jason Bear, who's a good corner. Sets up this third down right now, Tess. Big third down. Fans get up here at Eamon G. Carter. Looking for their defense to come up with a stop. And K State folks and Clemson folks watching elsewhere, probably hoping for the same as Oklahoma's looking to secure their spot. They have a piece of the big 12 title, not outright. And that was short as Jones was heading back. Pressured by Pearson on the inside. Big Pearson, that's a nice series for him. Big powerful man on the inside. He just going to be working against Sam Shedd inside. He just does a just a really nice job. So the Horn Frogs defense able to slow down the Sooners for a moment and Tress way back out to punt. Dawson, a little anxious moment there with Sky Dawson. He has had some ball handling issues on returns. Muffed one against West Virginia at the 10 yard line that led to a score for the Mountaineers, but he's able to secure that. Of course, Sunday night on ESPN, we will unveil the matchups to all the BCS Bowls. It's the Discover Card BCS Selection Show, Sunday, 8 30 on ESPN. You can also see it live on your Watch ESPN app. Rose Bowl is going to include Stanford. K State's going to play Texas tonight to see if they can win the Big 12 outright. Earn a trip to the Fiesta. Oklahoma hoping to get there as well. And now Boykin connects again. Sky Dawson, so a little bit of momentum and some confidence for Trevon Boykin. And this time they play a little bit of a zone. And Boykin, a little late with the throw, but effective. Able to make that throw off the sideline. They've been staying outside most of the time. And there's a little easier for the quarterback to see. And he has the arm strength to be able to make that throw. Catalan coming around from that slot position. Catalan crosses to the 31 yard line where he was met by Tom Ward. Remember, Boykin struggled early, especially passing the ball today. That punter was out there time and time again for TCU. But then on the last possession, able to find Brandon Carter for an 80 yard touchdown. Those first nine drives weren't so pretty. Well, you know, you're looking for some consistency. You're not always going to get it with the way they're doing it right now. But when the opportunity presents itself, he was able to make it. The pass on second and three, and nice. that ball is complete for a first down out past the 45 yard line to the reliable Josh Boyce. And the coverage was excellent. Demontre Hurst was all over him, but he gained an advantage with his body and body position. Watch him take the inside, and Boykin anticipates the throw. That's just really well done. He's thrown to his spot. He had Hurst going for a ride there at the end of that 15 yarder. Catalan now joins Boykin in the backfield here. And here is the freshman. And he's able to cross midfield. Tackled by Frank Shannon, who's been playing well. And so all of a sudden. They're having some success on first downs. And they're now you're, you're second and five, you're getting to very manageable areas. Boykins had some success throwing on the outside. You saw Boyce on the outside winning in his one on one, which is what they had to be able to do. See if they can continue it. Jared Anderson looking to put his freshman quarterback in manageable situations. Second and four, that's one of them. 
And he slings it sidearm right into the ground as he was looking Cam White's way. That one wasn't even close. Here's Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator. You think he's into this, Matt? <laughs> Either that or he has an awful twitch. <laughs> he's been so bothered the past couple weeks by that defense, allowing 634 yards per game the last couple weeks. That's the worst in the country in that stretch. Those thrillers that they played against Oklahoma State and West Virginia. Who wins third down? That's the key. To get to the 44, pressure up the middle. Now off the edge, that's a fumble. That is a live ball rolling, scooped up that time by Shannon and Frank Shannon inside the 15. And now they're saying the officials all the way back are saying it's an incomplete pass. RJ Washington had the pressure and the officials are saying incomplete pass and look at Stoops. Well, they want to get out there and snap this thing as fast as they can. Is they, his arm coming forward? Oh, it's really close. It may be, but that's. Now, you're going to have to overturn what the call in the field is. RJ Washington just came right off that edge. He beat Collins clean. The ball is about to be thrown. Just watch the watch the mechanics. Now the arm has to start to come forward. And it looks like it was. But is it coming forward because it's R.J. Washington's body that's forcing the arm no, forward see, on the swipe? He starts his throwing motion. Right. Oh, that's a close one. It's going to be one of those things that I don't know if you can overturn the call on the field test. This is in real time. Be the judge. That's a tough one. You can start to see the throw in motion, and it looks like it's coming forward. But here's the good news for TCU. You Ruling can, on the field is an incomplete pass. Yeah, now, everybody's right. natural reaction in the field of play was fumble, return. Here goes the Oklahoma defense. Here comes Frank Shannon, and all of a sudden, whistles are blowing back at the 40-yard line. Dave Kataya is our rules expert, the former head of the Pac-12 officials. Dave, you take a look at this. What do you see? And what are you looking for if you're the replay official? What you're looking for is that the quarterback must have control of the ball when his arm is moving forward in order to rule this a forward pass. Now, what you have to see here is, is, his, is he in control of the ball when his arm moves forward? When there's any doubt, they've got to stay with the call in the field. Now, it looks like he probably has control, but we've got to take several looks at this to make sure. As you can see there, the key is, does he have control of the ball when that arm starts forward? If he loses control of the ball the review, before the, the arm starts. With a clear recovery by the defense, the ball will be placed on a 40-yard line. Oklahoma will have possession first and 10. So Police they are saying the five, zero, seven. that indeed it was a fumble. They reversed the call. Dave was pointing out the question of does the quarterback have control of the ball? The arm is moving forward. This group here, led by replay official Richard Jordan, reverses it, says no, that's a fumble. The pressure from R.J. Washington, the recovery by Frank Shannon, and they will spot the ball at the 40-yard line. First down, Oklahoma, we think. Dave Kataya, our rules expert, for his insight. I'm surprised at that call. I don't think there was enough there to be able to say definitively, but apparently they did. They felt they had the indisputable video evidence. First down, Sooners. And Landry Jones. Sudden change, but incomplete. Poorly incomplete. He was trying to get down, a lip, down that right sideline. And had that been... It was covered all the way. Actually, probably better off. Now, let's just watch. So apparently, he's saying that that ball was coming out before the arm started coming forward, and there was no control. Officials felt they had the indisputable video evidence to say that he did not have control of the ball when the arm was coming forward. So the fumble recovery stands. Ball, though, placed at the 40-yard line. And 
Williams. First contact was made by Kenny Kane. As it'll be third down and a long five. Sam Carter was in the middle of that thing again. He's had a good game here today. Sam Carter, now he's been, he had some tight coverage. He gave up a touchdown on the long one, but he had himself a pick. And he's been in on a lot of uh, tackles. And this third down is much like it was on that last third and long. See if the defense can help things out here for TCU after the turnover. Working Landry Jones. Keep his hot stretch going. Third and six. And it's a first down Sooners to Kenny Stills as he makes the reception at the 24 yard line. Well, they came with a blitz, which means they manned up everybody outside. And when Landry Jones saw that, he went back to what Shannon said from the start, to the guy he has the most comfort with, and that's Kenny Stills. Matched up on a good corner on the outside. But Varick's a pretty good player, but Stills beat him on that one. Nicely thrown ball. Checks at the line of scrimmage. Play clock now down to four. Smooth quarterback guiding the way. Williams. And Williams met by Kenny Kane. Gaining two yards there. So Oklahoma offense in uh, looks on. Got that pressure on Jones. Caused the fumble. Yeah, that uh, Washington did a nice job on that, on the pressure. And then the other group is doing a nice job also. That's this offensive line. They're providing nice time for Landry Jones to throw. And they've been beating them to the punch in the run game. Oh, hit him right in the helmet. But Stansley Mapanga couldn't pull it off. I think it surprised Mapanga. He dropped back into coverage, did the star defensive end, and Jones just nailed him right in the helmet. Yeah, that's what happened. He did a nice job of turning and trying to look up Justin Brown. They did that earlier with Carter. And now, again, that's another big third down right here. Third and eight. Four receivers, Williams in the backfield. Now he comes in motion, pulls coverage with him. And a good tackle that time by Olabode as Shepard couldn't get to the outside and find those sticks. Gary Patterson and his defensive staff rolled the bones here a little bit in this last series. Olabode had to make the play because he was locked up man to man. Everybody else has run off. It's one on one in that spot. Olabode came through and sets up this field goal attempt. Michael Honeycutt had a lot of success with the shorter range field goals this year. He's been 12 of 14 from inside of 40 yards. This attempt from 34. And Honeycutt able to put it through. 24 14 here, Reese. Thank you, Reese. Here on Championship Saturday. Dr. Pepper Championship Week. It's been great carrying it right through from Thursday night. What we saw in the Big East and Louisville and get their way to the BCS when things are announced tomorrow. We got 47,501. Doesn't seem like a big number, but in this palace of a football stadium here in Fort Worth, they pack them in, and it is a magnificent setting now for the next level of this program. Big 12 football and teams like this, the Sooners coming to Fort Worth. So Oklahoma looking for a share of the Big 12 title, if not the Big 12 title outright, which will give them that automatic BCS berth. Of course, at large, a win today would help that cause. Notre Dame, Brad says, well, let's assume Alabama for a moment. Oregon and at large in the Fiesta against the Big 12 champ could be K-State, that yet to come. That could land Oklahoma at large against Florida in the Sugar. SEC gets the replacement there. Florida State, if they win tonight in the ACC title game against the Big East champ Louisville in the Discover Orange Bowl. And we'll see what happens. Big 10, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Stanford in a 
dramatic win last night against UCLA. They're back in the Rose Bowl. And now DJ Catalan showing some of his speed. Remember at the start of the game, they tried to run that thing and they were shutting that down. What's happened? Well, the receivers on the outside are doing a nicer job of getting into their blocks. And then you're forcing those defensive backs to have to disengage, and they're not. Catalan's been able to take advantage of that to the tune of nine yards, sets up to second and one. Oklahoma showing pressure off the edge against Boykin. Hands off to Catalan, who picks up the first down to the 37. Just the start of what's an outstanding day. You got Cincinnati and Connecticut, and number 20 Boise State in Nevada. And who knows with these computers and the outcomes we could get Boise as a non-AQ that's hoping that maybe things break their way. Northern Illinois and Boise hoping to get to number 16 and see if they can get a piece of this BCS pie. Boise, of course, Chris Peterson's group. Not as much firepower as they had, but always, always well coached. Got a couple of losses this year to the Broncos. First down run now by Catalan as he muscles his way to the 43. I like what this offensive line here for TCU has done in the second half. They've regrouped at halftime, and they're getting some running room. Remember, all through the first half, Oklahoma's defensive front just shut them down. They gave them absolutely nothing. They've been consistent with it. And they've been pounding it back inside. Catalan's been tough inside. Second and five. Empty set now. Dean comes from that slot. Boykin keeps it himself, and Boykin has the first down. And Boykin's got a good gainer inside the 30, all the way down to the 21 yard line goes Travon Boykin. All he needed was just a little bit of room. Because Boykin, we said at the start, he's got the big legs. He can make you miss, and it's just well protected. Nobody in the inside. Well done. 36-yard run by the freshman quarterback. Clock counting down here in the third quarter. Had one touchdown run earlier after the interception return. Now, big gainer here. Last play of the third. Goes for a minimal gain. But TCU is on the move. Oklahoma's looking for a piece of that Big 12 title, if not outright. Fourth quarter when we return. Such difficult news to digest and what's happened in Kansas City this morning as we're here in Fort Worth start of the fourth quarter TCU facing a second and nine against number 11 Oklahoma Boykin over the middle able to get it complete would be third and short as he found Matthew Tucker you know something about Boykin here in this third quarter that's kind of clicked with him. I think a little bit of confidence he's gaining some confidence he's having some success he's starting to throw the ball back inside remember First half, they hardly did anything at all. It was all to the outside. Now this third down, if you can use the whole field, Joe, that changes the whole scenario. That's what he's done well here in the second half. Third down and four. Remember, a capable runner as well in spots like this. And here he tries to do it on the ground, but he can't get anywhere. At Oklahoma, front was right on top of it with Casey Walker and Jamarcus McFarland. They had their big boys on the inside. They just shut down that inside completely. Wanted to give that option game inside, but it, it didn't happen. McFarland, really well done along with Walker. They just took those two guards and no movement whatsoever. So the talented freshman kicker, Oberchrome, comes on. He's from nearby Arlington, Texas. Has had four misses this year from inside of 40. This from 32. And that is no good. 
You jinxed him. I did. Yeah, I heard you. you said I just said the stats, my man. <laughs> 10 of 14 inside 40. So it stays a 10 point margin for Coach Stoops' team. Looks like he hit it pretty good. Whoa. Now you got to assume the goal post. It goes up into. You can, but test to me. I'm not, that's from this angle. I, they're standing right underneath it looking straight up. But from that angle, that looked like it was good. Now, keep in mind, they're right underneath it. Mm -hmm. And the camera isn't quite. That's why those officials position themselves there. And those goal posts extend up in outer space the way they view it. That's a nice hit. Williams gets out to the 25. Here's another look. Perhaps this is a better angle. The problem is you don't know where it is when it crosses the plane of the goal post there. As you saw, the majority of that kick was outside and then on the back end of that kick, it comes across, but you can't say the plane with that angle. So it stays a 10 point lead for Oklahoma. Looking for a Big 12 title. Second and five. Williams. Stiff arm, but couldn't get there. It'll be third and short. You see if we don't get the belldozer right here. What they've been doing most all game long in these third and short situations. Remember the last time that they had it, and they're not going to use it apparently, but the last time they had it, he got stuffed. So they keep the 254 pound quarterback on the sideline, and Landry Jones stays in on third and one. Williams. And that leg drive. Has it by a half a yard. He was met by Chucky Hunter. But it'll be a first down Oklahoma. Williams is closing in on 100 yards here today. Got about 95-ish, 96, something like that. 66-yard touchdown run led the way for Damian Williams. some more as he runs right over Chris Hackett. Juco transfer. Grew up in San Diego all summer long. They talked about him. They said keep an eye on 26. Think he's going to be a good one. He has been a good one. Had that 95 yard touchdown against Texas third longest in Oklahoma history. At 167 yards that day. And he's got 101 here against a TCU defense that's always so well coached comes to play week in and week out second and four and it'll be third and less than one what I like about him Tess he, he can finish his runs he's not afraid to stick his face in there at the end and just go get it much like much like what they do with big Blake Bell big man comes in Landry Jones the record setter gets a drink and says go move those sticks for me. And one little leap and he does see how he does that with he'll take that ball and he'll just hesitate just a tad to allow the blockers to get in front of him and that patience that little bit of patience right there you watch this little step. It allows things to be defined, and then he can let his legs and eyes do the rest. Just a little sidestep, just bubbles the play a bit, gets those blockers out in front, picks his hole patiently. That's his third run for a first down here today. Play action now. Jones, he's going to launch it downfield, and it was well overthrown. Best chance for it was Jason Barrett. Of course, tonight on ABC, you got Colin Klein. Can he make one last statement for his Heisman push?
Kansas State looking to secure the Big 12 title with a win. Get a trip to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. They go up against number 18, Texas. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows 8, part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. That's tonight at 8 on ABC. Of course, this TCU team beat Texas. And has Oklahoma back-to-back, -back and beating those two teams doesn't happen very often back-to-back. -back. Jones. That is incomplete as he was looking for Justin Brown to transfer from Penn State covered by Kevin White who still stays in touch with all of his Penn State guys. This is a big third down here for both sides. Seemingly this TCU defense has gained a little bit of confidence. This is the area right here where they've got to be able to take advantage of this third and long. Just one for six in those third and long spots today. Bob Stoops offense. TCU hasn't had a sack today. Let's see if they can get after Landry Jones a bit. They only bring three. Flag is down. And we will check on that as it falls incomplete. Not so sure Maponga may not have been lined up offsides. Offside, number 90 of the defense. Yep. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, third down. Now close it to a third and five. Stuff that drives Coach Patterson crazy. Yeah, you can see him right here. Yeah, he's his head is touching the ball where that line would be. Sets up this third down. They just had an opportunity there and would have passed the test. Let's see if they can do it back to back plays. Got a little pressure on him that time, and it goes incomplete. Right there, Tess. Did you see? That's exactly what happens to him. That's where Landry Jones has to get better. Maponga and Coots both got pressure, and he watches feet in the pocket. He gets a little, gets some happy feet going in there. He can feel the pressure, and he turns to his right and tries to fire it in there right away, and that's dangerous. That's where picks usually happen. Look at his feet. Mechanics are awful. He just took, takes a look to the right and throws it. Not good. Came after that punt a bit. Sky Dawson calling for the fair catch. Let's it bounce inside the five. And Oklahoma's going to be able to pin TCU there. 9.46 remaining. Oklahoma special teams doing their job. Will Oklahoma get themselves to a BCS Bowl? They're up 10 here, 9.46 remaining. Now it's time for today's Aflac trivia question. Aflac. We're wondering, Gary Patterson, head coach at TCU, where did he get his first coaching opportunity? Where did it all begin for the man who has taken TCU to a Rose Bowl victory and to the Big 12? His team backed up here after that fine punt by Tress Way. The pass from his end zone is Boykin. Downfield, he throws it. And it is over the head of the strong safety, Javon Harris. But that pressure came from David King. The answer to today's Aflac trivia question. Let's bring out the team photo at K State back in 1982. Oh, he's not the young looking Gary Patterson, let me tell you. A lot of, a lot of, Water slowed under that bridge, and let me tell you. <laughs> well, and there's the tie into the shoes. Yeah, his, little, <laughs> his little habit that he likes. Called superstition. Calls a little nervous habit in game. He'll hitch those pants, he'll tie those shoes. So K State's his alma mater. And obviously he could help out his alma mater. He played there as well. That is incomplete right off the hands of David Porter, that number 14 popular jersey in these parts. Andy Dalton wore it for four successful years. You'll see plenty of number 14 jerseys in Fort Worth. Well, they'd like it a lot more if he'd have made the catch. And that sun, it's wicked sun right there. But that ball is a nicely thrown ball. The route's good. He gets a separation. It's right in his hands. You got to make that catch. First down would have gotten him out of here. Instead, you got third and long. A lot of folks watch the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday in these parts. Those Andy Dalton jerseys still popular. Third down and ten now. Big hole for TCU from their end zone. 
And Boyce trying to reach out that time with the extra effort of the pen on the mark there. You see where his cleats dug out a yard short, and that's exactly where they're putting the ball. You know, right where you see the cleat marks going out of bounds there. But Tess, his arm was forward that's when what his he feet did. were going out. He made that extra effort as he was sliding out there and creating those cleat skid marks. Oh, but that left foot good, is already out by the time call. he extends the left hand. Good call by the official. You can see he's standing right there. And there's the divot. And Josh Boyce. Aren't you supposed to replace all divots? Typically. Yeah. Okay. Here there, sprinkle the fertilizer down there in the field. <laughs> Delay game on the offense. Five yard penalty remains. Down. That's an arm folder for Patterson. Another series like that, he's going to tie his shoes together. Huh. <laughs> I think he felt like at times his offense was already doing that on the field. Ethan Perry now, a little deeper in his end zone. Of course, he has the win here. And that is a muff punt. That's a live ball. TCU recovers. Jonathan Anderson jumped right on it. Justin Brown couldn't negotiate the win. He tracked it, and then it looked like it got away from him right at the Ooh, end. Field is a muff by the receiving team with a recovery by the kicking team. First down. Anderson had the wherewithal and the strength of hands to be able to pull that bad boy in. But you see what happened with Justin Brown. He was right under it, and then it looks like it just swayed at the end, and he missed it. Well, the wind was a major factor there. They're going with the wind. Our special teams guru, Mike Black, timed it as a 4.62 hang time, plus it extended with the wind. Now Boykin's going to take a shot. Oh, and it was just tipped away by Tony Jefferson. Great athletic effort at the end there, as Josh Boyce was the target. Uh, Jefferson's played a terrific game here today. He's been where he's supposed to be all game long. Watch him at the end of this. Just gets his hand up there. Now, you saw Boykin, he pumped that thing three times. Tess, he should have let it go the first time. Let the receiver do, put the ball out there, let the receiver go get it. Outstanding play by Tony Jefferson. One of the top prospects for next April's draft if he was a skip his senior year. Second and 10. Boykin only able to get that time to the 27 yard line as Andule and Nelson were able to corral him. Okay, but right here, Tess, now you can, you have two plays called. Because right now, I'm not going to trust my kicker for another long field goal. Even though, even though the wind is at your back, try to get, have two plays and know that you can try to make it if you have to on fourth down. There's Justin Brown. He muffed that punt moments ago. Opened up the door for TCU. Third down and six. And a great pressure. And they do. It was a bad snap. But it is caught and then tackled quickly as Harris was all over Boyce. That's good coverage by Harris. So now it's a fourth down, Matt. Yeah, let's see what you do. Now, for me, I'm, I'm going for it. Remember Jaden Oberkroon. Missed that field goal last time. And they're going to. This would be a 42 yard field goal attempt where he is seven for eight over 40 yards. But instead, Gary Patterson keeps the offense on. Fourth down and four. Four seconds. Black comes in there. And there was some motion. Prior to the snap, false starts. Number 69 of the offense. Five yard penalty remains. Fourth down. That is the freshman Collins, the right tackle, the first true freshman to start on offense under Patterson, and that pressure moment got to him there. Remember at the start, now, now I'm putting it, and that's what they're going to do. And at the start of this game, we said this is a very well coached team. They normally don't beat themselves. Guess what? They've had way too many. Oh, he's going to try it's a 40. Field goal. Yeah, it's only Holy a 40, 47 yard field goal. Remember, he's got, got the win. Has the win. 
And he is seven of eight from 40 to 49 yards this year. And this time he's able to put it through. So it's just a touchdown lead for Oklahoma. Jaden Overchrome closes into that Oklahoma lead. Got a ball game here in Fort Worth. Look at this, the Founders Club. That's a level just below us here at the renovated Amon G. Carter Stadium. $164 million renovation. Six families put in $15 million a pop. There are six suites that you see right there in that middle level that are as nice as you may ever see in any sports facility in our country. Just unbelievable amenities here at TCU. Seven. Oklahoma's ball when we come back. Seven minutes to play. They want that Big 12 title. Will they get it? Stay with us. <laughs> Who will win the Big 12? Oklahoma's making their pace here, trying to hold on in Fort Worth, 24-17. DCS standings are brought to you by Discover Card as K-State is sitting at number six, a date with number 18 Texas tonight on ABC, a win by K-State, and they will have the Big 12 title. Remember, they defeated Oklahoma 24-19 back in September. Oklahoma can win a share here if they can defeat TCU. They win the thing outright if Texas can pull off the upset, and they're still hoping, regardless, for a BCS at large berth, no matter how this whole thing plays out. So now you're down under seven minutes, and now you have to let your playmakers make plays for you. If you're Landry Jones, the guy I want to get the ball in his hands is Saunders, number 18. Saunders stills you trust, but Saunders has been the guy who's been able to eat the middle of that defense up here today. Six catches for 99 yards for the transfer from Fresno State. Second and nine now. Williams goes in motion, leaving it empty, and here is Brown. And Brown goes low to make that catch. So it'll be third and short for Oklahoma. Third and about two. Tight coverage here out of TCU. You got to be on your coverage. You got to jump it underneath. Under six minutes. Taking a long time to get this call in. You're already under 10. Oh, they didn't cover the flat. And here's Williams out there in the flat, and he breaks free. And Damian Williams continues with his strong day. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Non-stop on the road, Reese. Always using it. So a rematch there in Conference USA. UCF trying to pull that out. Damian Williams. One nice move there on the near side. Crosses midfield. Puts on another juke. And is finally wrestled down to the 34. Kevin White finally got to him, but Damian Williams, Oklahoma, Oklahoma able to lean on him well here. Damian Williams is going to make the first guy miss. And he's been all day long the guy they've been able to go to. He's catching the ball in the outside. He has a big, long touchdown run. And it's been early and often with Williams. He finishes things. He's just. He's a pretty darn good player, and on this one, you had to make a play, put the ball in his hands. We got a we got a suitor down in the middle of the field, Ted. That was Damian Williams who was down and just popped up. There's another one, and another lineman also slow to get up. We'll take a break. Good for the rest of today. Joe Tessator, Matt Bell, and Shannon Spake with you here in Fort Worth, Oklahoma. 24-17. Brennan play now in at running back for the Sooners. As 
as he's able to get to the 31, tackled by Chucky Hunter. Damian Williams and Trey Miller trotted off after rising slowly at the end of that last long run by Williams. Look at Williams Day. And they're both back in. Miller and Williams, as you can see. Those are the guys you want right now. You want to get the ball into Williams' hand. If you're going to throw it, to me, it's Saunders. Play action. They swing it out. Jalen Saunders. Nice move by Saunders, and he will have the first down to the 22 yard line. And that's why you want to get the ball in his hands. Seemingly nothing in front of you. And then he just, he's got great feet. Watch his feet at the end of this. Great balance. Look at this. Make you miss. Boom. Back up inside. <laughs> those guys, those guys are a nightmare to play against, but boy, they're fun to have on your team. Just ask Oklahoma State. Went for 10 catches, 162 yards, and that offensive gem of a game a week ago. Here today, he went over 100 yards. He's at 108, 109. Seven catches on the day for Saunders. Williams that time is torn down. Chucky Hunter is having a decent day against the run is Hunter. TCU is going to have to take some chances here at three and a half. He's going to have to dial in some pressure sooner or later. What the heck is it? There's a sighting right there. Look at that. What cut? No problem. That looks like a younger you. I'm at a racetrack there. I must have been losing money on that day. I don't know why I'm smiling. They usually hand me the tickets already torn up. Second and 13. Jones. And that is incomplete off the hands of Saunders. Shannon. So Joe I asked the team about that beautiful headshot of you down here on the sidelines. They told me it's simply to block the other team from uh, the TCU team to block the Oklahoma team from seeing what they're doing. So you are a distraction down here my friends. I'm sure I think they're better off with uh, with the rock with the rock or Samantha Steele or Mr. Monopoly. Big third down here Ted. Mr. Monopoly. Third and 13. See if he rolls the dice, brings some pressure. Looks like he's just going to take three and drop eight. And a timeout for Oklahoma. This is the first timeout of the second We got 2.59 to go. 30 second timeout. Critical juncture as Oklahoma tries to put this thing away. Celebrating its eighth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, all state makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds. For each field goal, an extra point kicked in today. Allstate has contributed more than $3 million in scholarship monies. You know, it's interesting to think about this TCU team. Lost their best running back earlier this year, putting a freshman quarterback in there who was a running back at one point earlier this season, trying to hang with a team that offensively has been as dynamic as any team we've seen in college football the last two weeks. To me, it all comes down to one thing. I think Gary Patterson is as good a coach as there is in all of college football really at any level he gets you well prepared he he understands the great mind for defense and he's going to need that mind right here on this big third down opposite a coach that does nothing but string together 10 win seasons Bob Stoops and Landry Jones are going to make more history for Oklahoma third and 13 here's Jones and it was thrown short and incomplete. To be a 40 yarder right here. Running play was the intended receiver. Sorry, 40, what, 43. That ball's got to be caught, number one. That's the first thing. But what they did was they only rushed three, dropped eight, forced Landry Jones to have to throw it back underneath. That should set up this 40, what, three yard attempt, 42, 42 43. yard attempt. Ball spotted at the 25 for Michael Honeycutt. Made from 34 earlier. He's two for three on the year from this distance. Had a pressure kick last week. Just an extra point. And look wow. at that thing. TCU is still alive. That wind, Tess, there's no denying that. 
Did you see that one? I mean, that thing was like a kite hanging up in the Fort Worth sky. <laughs> I've, I've never seen it one. It took a hard left turn at I-30. Look at that. Look at that. Holy smokes. I've never seen a kite in the sky like that, Des, but I got to tell you, if that's what it is, they're all over the place. You know, J.J. Henry, the PGA Tour player, went to TCU, and he's at today's game. That was like a bad hook right there off the tee. That wind got the best of him. So 2.49 to go. Boykin can TCU rally now as he gets it out to Ladarius Brown. Trailing by seven. A-State wins the Big 12 with an Oklahoma loss. Oklahoma gets a share of the Big 12 by winning this and stays alive, depending on what Texas does. See about a BCS at large berth as well. And another completion now out to Brown, who breaks one tackle, and TCU's moving the ball as Boykin looks confident here. This field goal that could have pushed it to 10 brought this thing in for a nice landing for Oklahoma. Instead, we've got pressure now. 214 and counting. Plenty of time. He doesn't have to rush himself. He still has timeouts. Clock will stop with first downs. There comes some pressure. Center sees it and calls it out. And he gets some help with the running back. Boykin knows. Got to get rid of that ball, and he just. Throws that thing to the near sideline. Pressure came from Ndule. It's from nearby Dallas Jesuit prep. Here in the Metroplex, he was coming in on Trevon Boykin. Well, you're going to see the pressure and the protection, which is not bad. But the bigger deal is look at this coverage. There's coverage all over the field, down the field, on the side, nowhere clearly to go with the ball. Second and ten. They bring four. Boykin with time going downfield. Does he have them? Yes! Cam White! And TCU is in business. Forty-three yard reception. Demontre Hurst trying to take away the inside. The transition is where he was beat. But that's a fantastic job on the outside of gaining leverage. White gets inside, and the ball test was right exactly where it had to be. So a first down at the 12. Red shirt freshman looking for a fantastic finish. Catalan now, and he's met at the line of scrimmage by Tony Jefferson, the leading tackler for the Sooners. Gary Patterson trying to pull it off here. See if they can make the comeback and tie the game. For TCU. Let's check in with Shannon Spake. Well, Joe, uh, watching Trevon Boykin on the sideline, you can really see how he's evolved during this game. He started off a little tense. He's even started to smile a little, loosen up. You got to believe these last two games have been huge learning experiences for him. He spends every single time he's on the sideline, he spends it with a graduate assistant, going over what just happened on offense and talking about what they're going to do next. But he has certainly loosened up, and you can see a lot more confidence as this game has progressed. Well, there's Shannon. He was just a 17-year-old kid when he arrived on this campus. Now a redshirt freshman who wasn't expected to even hit the field this year. Casey Paul Hall was the capable veteran, and he got into legal trouble. And since October 6, he became the starter. Boykin fourth nationally in touchdown passes by a freshman. Started off slow today. Remember, had the win where he just really managed the game at Texas last week. A lot wasn't asked of him. Not like a pressure spot that he has found himself in in the final few minutes here. Let's see if he can pull it off. But the biggest thing for him, you can see he's gotten more comfortable as this game's gone on. He thinks right now he's scoring. Second down. Out of the backfield, and that is Catalan, and he is met again by Tony Jefferson. Yeah, see, I didn't like that play call by Jared Anderson because you right now you know, they're they're matching everything up. Catalan's going to have to beat that underneath coverage, and they're jumping it right away. He didn't get out of bounds. That clock is counting down. 
We are under a minute to play here in Fort Worth as Boykin looks over, trying to get that play call in. Bob Stoops looking for a Big 12 title. Third down and 10. And Stoops defense hold here. Boykin is going to run it inside the 10, inside the 5. A flag is down as Boykin has scored, but we will check to see if it stands up. It's going to be a hold that's coming back. Holding on the offense, number 66. The penalty will be 10 yards from the previous spot. Third down. That's Fultz, number 66, and it was obvious. Stacy McGee beat him clean. And Fultz just grabbed him. You can see it right here. Watch Stacy McGee. He's going to get what a good pass rusher does to the inside off an edge. And Fultz just hooks him right there. He hooked him with that left hand, and it's TCU's best lineman, Blaze Fultz, the senior. So it backs them all the way up to a third and 20, and only 38 seconds left in the game. They bring pressure against the freshman. And he connects with Boyce, but Boyce unable to shake free. So he's down at the 15-yard line, leaving 31 seconds, a timeout, and a fourth down. This is the third and final timeout for TCU taken in a half. It will be a 30-second timeout. Michael Honeycutt had a chance just a few moments ago to seal the deal for Oklahoma, create that cushion. The missed field goal, though, TCU. Came down the big pass from Boykin. And now facing a fourth down. Aerial coverage today is being provided by MetLife. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do this. So, Tess, here you are. They're going to probably, what they're going to do is they're, if I was Oklahoma, I would have some kind of uh, matchup with my receivers underneath, protect myself on the back end. Rush few, so I would, I would rush three, drop eight, and match my guys up underneath. And then one of those defenders, I'm dropping down in the middle because I'm not going to let Boykin's legs beat me. And get a first down at the two-yard line. Fourth and thirteen. Boykin. Complete. He was looking for Josh Boyce, but it goes incomplete as Julian Wilson and Tony Jefferson combined on the coverage. Tony Jefferson finishes the game the way he started, making plays. Jefferson, he played well all game long. And in a big throw at the end, oh, that's got to be caught. That's through his hands. He's got to make. Boyce has it. Boyce, Boyce had it. Gary Patterson knew it. He did not come down with it. And that's going to be it. Oklahoma ready to clinch a share of the Big 12 title. Of course, they have to wait to see their BCS fate based on what happens tonight. K-State win it outright. Or Will Oklahoma fans get ready to do the unthinkable and root for Texas tonight? Remember, K State holds the tiebreaker, so they got to root for their rivals. An FBS record 34th 10 win season in school history for the Sooners as they finish the season strong. The thrillers against West Virginia and Oklahoma State. And a tough and gritty one down here in Fort Worth, 24 to 17. Let's go down to the field to Shannon. Well, Coach, you told me this week when you play here at Oklahoma, you're expected to win. Share of the Big 12 title, you guys won the game. What did you see out of your players here tonight? Really proud of the whole team just to hang in there. We had some major turnovers that led to points for them. Fought through it. Uh, and uh, came back to win the last few weeks. Our offense has bailed us out at the end of the game. Here our defense did, so it's kind of fitting. How closely will you be watching tonight's game? Oh, uh, you know, everybody will be watching it, so, uh, but uh, I'm proud of my guys. We're, we got at least a part of it, and that's pretty special. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Five and own road games for the first time since 08. They clinch a share of the Big 12 title. Will they get it outright? We will find out 
and see what happens with K-State. Stay tuned for College Football Scoreboard presented by Honda. Our final score, 24-17 Sooners. Now let's get you back to the studio.